Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. It's the 31st of May, a Thursday, and uh, we're going to continue uh, a little bit of a discussion we've been having about uh, the June 2012 Prophecy in the News magazine. Uh, the headline is Sounds Out of Heaven. Well, we've been writing about strange sounds that are being all uh, heard all over the world and uh, the possible biblical implications for that. And we have gotten some reaction, and one interesting email we got came from Nebraska, uh, a, a gentleman named Jerry and his wife, Barbara. And uh, Jerry writes, Gary and Bob, uh, we have a difference of opinion regarding the, quote, sounds of heaven, end quote. I've always been interested in the unexplained, in other words, UFOs, crop circles, and now sounds. And I see an alarming similarity in all three. First, first off, they appeal to a couple of our senses, sight and sound. They appear worldwide, sort of giving the whole world an introduction to their presence. Uh, next, they come off uh, as giving us a message. And it is not the gospel of salvation. They leave the observer with questions of their own origin and purpose. They leave the viewer with a feeling of fear, being vulnerable, as opposed to when an angel visits, one feels secure. The observer is left to his own understanding to reason out the purpose of the display, and this causes co <coughs> controversy among all the witnesses. If God leaves man with a message, and that's an important point, by the way, if God leaves a message with mankind. There's no confusion as to what it means. Well, Jerry, in all these points, uh, I agree with you. And then his next paragraph in the letter says, the trumpet of God has always been the blowing of the shofar, the ram's horn, not the sounds of two locomotives colliding or that of a poorly tuned guitar. Some say the sounds are like a distant conversation that is impossible to make out. If God were speaking, you can bet he does not mumble, and you'll hear every word. I agree with that, Jerry. We should consider that there is no need for more explanation of God's intent regarding us. He gave his word, Jesus, and his written word, the scripture, the Bible. According to, uh, to it, it is expressly forbidden. Well, some say the sounds are a rehearsal of things to come. God is perfect and is not in need of practice or rehearsal. Satan is here to deceive. And he, Jerry quotes the Bible, if it were possible, he would deceive even the elect. And uh, Jerry, on all these points, I agree. However, <clears throat> we're covering what is a global phenomenon and which many people associate with Judgment Day. In fact, uh, as we reported a couple of times, uh, when Bob and I had conversations concerning the phenomenon, the people who hear it, even if they're not believers, have an eerie feeling, and they come up with uh, words like apocalyptic, or the apocalypse, or judgment day. Uh, these are fear-inducing kinds of phenomena. And Jerry, you say that if God were doing this, um, there would be no fear or uncertainty. God would make himself clear. I totally agree. But it's not my point, and as Bob Ulrich and I discussed this, it, it was not either of our points to assert that God is behind these sounds. Uh, the Bible tells us in several places that there not only is war in heaven, but in the end times that war will accelerate. Revelation chapter 12 talks about uh, a war in heaven in which the devil and his angels <clears throat> and Michael and his angels go forth against each other and there's a terrific war and, and Satan is finally cast down to the earth. And I believe that that will happen. And it's our assertion, uh, based on what we're hearing now, that, that perhaps uh, there is a, uh, a little preparation where maybe we're hearing the sounds of armies in heaven getting ready to go to war. And uh, it's bleeding over into this dimension. Uh, I do not believe that these sounds that are being reported, and by the way, as this is being made today, the 31st of May, I have two brand new reports 
that are very well validated, by the way. One report uh, coming out of Kalamazoo, Michigan. Uh, another report coming again out of Clintonville, Wisconsin. There are several new reports out of Europe of people hearing all kinds of strange sounds in the heavens. And uh, it's not my uh, contention that these sounds have anything at all to do with the actions of God, either in judgment or in blessing. I, I believe that it is very possible that we are hearing the sounds of war. You know, Jerry, you mentioned UFOs appearing all over the world and spreading doubt and uncertainty. Uh, usually those UFOs are silent, or at the most they make a very low humming sound or something. But suppose that there are louder uh, sounds now emanating from these UFOs, and suppose that that, that indicates that they're moving more and more into uh, our world in preparation for what the Bible surely uh, asserts as a final great battle. You know, when Jesus talked about uh, the end times in the Olivet Discourse, <clears throat> he said uh, in Matthew 24, 36, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, the Bible clearly tells us, Jude tells us uh, this, uh, also, uh, the epistles of Peter tell us this. Uh, uh, Genesis certainly speaks of angelic intrusions from the heavens at key times in human history. Uh, and so, uh, when Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, he is uh, giving us, I think, a very clear statement that there was angelic intrusion upon this planet during the days of Noah, and we can assume that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in our day, if in fact we are living in the end times, which we believe we are. And so perhaps we're hearing the sounds of angelic intrusion. Perhaps we're hearing the sounds of battle. Perhaps we're hearing armies marching as to war. And Bob and I quoted a number of scriptures and uh, and some historical accounts of sounds having been heard in heaven, both in biblical times and uh, recorded by uh, people who happened to be present during times of great historical change. And so it's not like we're talking about a, a new phenomenon that has never occurred before, uh, but in fact, maybe we're hearing a recurrence of some things that have been heard in the, in the past. Finally, uh, you mentioned something about the trumpet of God. <clears throat> and the... Uh, you mention here, and you say, the trumpet of God, and I'm quoting, has always been the blowing of the shofar. And uh, it's fascinating that uh, I would have a small disagreement with you on that point, because <clears throat> when we have the blowing of the first trumpet in the Bible, in Exodus 19.16, it came to pass on the third day in the morning, that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount, and that would be Mount Horeb, and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud, so that all the people who was in the camp trembled. That trumpet that's mentioned there uh, is not a musical instrument at all. It's not a shofar, not a silver trumpet. It's the voice of God that sounds like a trumpet. And, uh, and so on that point, uh, and by the way, it induced incredible fear in the Israelites who were gathered around the base of Mount Horeb. Uh, in fact, we find uh, in the New Testament uh, where this account is, uh, is given again that the people demanded Moses make it stop because it was driving them crazy in effect. So maybe we are living in momentous times, Jerry, uh, I don't disagree with you at all uh, on the basic point that the sound of the trumpet is a certain sound and not meant uh, to uh, infuse believers with confusion. On the other hand, there are evil angels, and the sounds of war in heaven uh, might be what we're hearing right now. And I will continue to be talking about this in the near future, I'm sure, uh, because the phenomenon continues. And we'll be watching. Hope you're watching too. And keep looking up everybody.